Hi, everybody. Welcome to our virtual health science Q&A. Uh, my name is Georgia. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at Newman University. Sorry, Senior Associate Director of Admissions. And um, tonight, you'll have an opportunity to learn about our healthcare programs that are offered at Newman University directly from the directors themselves. Um, once they introduce themselves and give a brief overview of their program, you're going to have some opportunities to ask them questions. Um, you're welcome to have your camera on. You can leave it off. If you want to ask a question by unmuting yourself and asking, go for it. Usually people put questions in the chat and I also have everything that you submitted in advance on your RSVP. So we'll go through those as well. Um, if you have any questions, hit us up in the chat, but we're going to start with program intros. And first up is Timothy Cho from Respiratory Care. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Tim Cho and I'm with the Respiratory Care Program. And uh, just real quick about what an RT is or a respiratory therapist. Um, we are specialized clinicians that work with patients with uh, cardiopulmonary disorders. Um, we're often known as the ones running in the hospital to the emergency, like during codes and rapid responses. But we also have another side where we work, uh, which is more like rehabilitation oriented, helping patients to um, function better and do their activities of daily living. And that might be through endurance as well as um, breathing exercises so they can um, tolerate more strenuous activities. Um, we often provide breathing treatments, but we also run the mechanical ventilators or life support in the hospitals. And we're uh, part of transport teams that uh, critically transport or that transport patient, uh, critically ill patients between hospitals. Um, what's kind of nice about this degree is once you get it, you can work in all of these areas. You don't have to go back to school. And so if you want to slow down as you get older, you might want to go work in the doctor's offices and uh, do testing. You can do that. Or if you like the excitement, you can go to the hospital. Um, what's also available is working full time uh, as a respiratory therapist. You can go back to school and get your bachelor's degree and kind of relieve some of that debt burden that's uh, often, often associated with it. Uh, the program is... Um, there's 20 spots. Uh, we accept uh, 20 applicants uh, once a year. Uh, they start in the fall semester, and the following fall semester, they will graduate. And our application uh, opens uh, February 1, and we'll basically take applicants um, until we're full, and a minimum GPA is a 2.0. Next up, we have our director of our nursing program, Teresa Vetter. Hi, I'm Teresa Vetter, and I'm director of the nursing program, and we're going to talk today specifically about the Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Um, I think most everybody's probably at some point in time had the experience of interacting with nurses and have some idea of what nurses do, but nursing is a profession who has a very wide range of roles and, and a very wide range of who we work with. We work with um, from birth to end of life, and we work in all different places, whether that's in the hospital or clinics, but also in schools, in, in the home, in um, going to see individuals in their own home instead of them coming to us, in industry, in, in a, just a wide variety of places, the military. Um, and so nursing just always has a variety of options for what one can be involved in. Our program is a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. So it's a four-year program. It is a um, results in being qualified to take the national licensing exam and be awarded a license to practice as a registered nurse. We do admit twice a year. We admit students every fall semester and again every spring semester. So we are always doing um, accepting applications and interviewing in the, one of those semesters for the semester to follow. We accept 32 students for each of those cohorts. Our applications for the fall semester open on February 1st, and the applications for the spring semester, they open on September 1st. And um, we don't actually put a 
closing date on that. Um, we accept applications until we fill the class. Once we have filled those 32 slots, then we would close the applications. So we do what's called rolling admission. Um, but we do, at, you know, encourage people to apply as, you know, as early as possible and get all of your stuff into us because, you know, once we accept 32 people and have 32 qualified candidates, we're going to be done. And so we will stop um, accepting um, enrollments. So the first two years of that program would be working on university general education and specific prerequisites we require for our program. So that would be a lot of things like science classes, um, writing classes, psychology, those types of things. Um, then the nursing program itself is four semesters. Um, so two years, we do not do nursing in the summer, and so um, it's actually four semesters to complete. We require a minimum grade point average of 2.85 to apply to our program. Thanks. Uh, next up is Jeff Vaughn, Director of our Radiologic Technology Program. Hi. Um... I would just uh, start off and let you know that this is a, the radiology technology program is an associate's degree. Uh, we only start once uh, a year. So currently uh, the application process is open and we will take uh, applications up until April 1st or till whenever we uh, are full. We can take up to 30 spots. Um, now it all depends on how much uh, clinical space we have. And that's, uh, you know, we're probably going to be anywhere between 25 and 27 this year, uh, this coming fall. And so, uh, and for the program, you, uh, the, the prerequisites, there's only about six classes you need. Um, and uh, you need to make at least a C in each of those courses, but you also need to maintain at least a 2.75 uh, GPA uh, in those courses. And so, um, uh, and the annual, like the, the median annual uh, salary for uh, as of 2021 for Kansas was about uh, $58,550. So, uh, that, so it's, uh, it's a pretty good uh, career. Not only that, do you, you open the doors for, your, uh, for yourself to further your education uh, to go into other modalities uh, such as MRI, CAT scan, um, mammography. Um, you know, those type thing, interventional radiology, and those four that I just mentioned are four that you don't actually have to go back to school for, but you also, but you need to get there though, you need uh, the diagnostic technology um, degree. So our program is uh, two years in length or five semesters. It's a, you will go uh, for the summer in between, uh, just for the one summer. And there, uh, and we do that because we can't make people get sick and we can't make them get hurt, right? So we have to wait for them to come to us. And so we have certain uh, competencies that we have to, uh, the students have to get done. And uh, so we uh, have to do that. Now we transfer to, you know, a lot of different uh, hospitals, uh, but we also, you'll get uh, access to go to some small, some small, uh, small hospitals and small clinics, because uh, there's a big difference between inpatient and outpatient. And so uh, we, uh, for us, we're, we're gonna be in multiple places, maybe in the same day. You might, we work in the emergency room, you might find us up in the operating room, you might find us doing diagnostic radiology or doing fluoroscopy. Uh, so it just depends on wherever you know, we're needed, where uh, we can uh, be able to go to all those different places. So, uh, so yeah, if you're interested, the application process is still open. Uh, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, last up is the director of our diagnostic medical sonography program, Brooke Ward. Hi, um, my name is Brooke Ward and I'm the director of the sonography program. Our program is a bachelor's degree. Our students are learning to use sonography, which is sound waves to create images to assist our radiologists in diagnosing various diseases and pathologies that the patients may have. 
Um, the students are in the program for five semesters, which includes two fall semesters, two springs, and a summer in between. Uh, we do only do one, one acceptance a year, and that is in the fall. So currently, our applications will be open the first week of February, and then they close April 3rd this year. Um, the students um, have options to work in clinics, hospitals, and sometimes they can work in applications. Um, they can also work in um, fixing machines, selling machines. Um, we've had students that have gone into traveling positions and worked in many different areas. So sonography is growing. Um, I would say that it's in its infancy medically. So a lot of um, new things coming. So it's pretty exciting. Um, a lot of people think about babies when they think about ultrasound and that is um, one of the big things that we do, of course, uh, but we also uh, do three different modalities over here at Newman. So we have general sonography, which looks at all the different organs in the body. And then we also have vascular sonography that looks at all the vessels. And then of course, OBGYN. So our students are able to sit for all three of those boards after they do the uh, five semesters. Um, the minimum GPA to apply is a 3.0, but that all, um, students can, and all the prereq courses, they can get a C or higher. But obviously, if you get all Cs, you don't have a 3.0. So you can have a C or higher as long as it doesn't affect the GPA of a 3.0. We currently have 10 spots open. Um, we, you know, we, we sometimes fill all those spots. It just depends. We are a very competitive program. So we do have plenty of applicants. Um, we just have to be very selective in making sure that all the students are going to be successful. So we do have 10 spots. Um, we hope to increase that and um, increase our positions of clinical sites around. Currently we have locations in Wichita area, surrounding cities and in surrounding states. So we are growing and we're pretty excited about that. Thanks, Brooke. Um, one of the other things that we uh, wanted to tell you a little bit more about is if you're thinking about rad tech or respiratory care, Kansas Promise Act might be a possibility for you. So I'm going to let Jeff on tell you a little bit more about that. All right. So this is uh, something that's uh, uh, somewhat uh, new within the last uh, two or three years. And so for the eligibility of this, you, you have to be um, uh, graduated from high school within the last year, or you'd be 21 uh, years older. So they're hitting a particular, um, you know, age group. And so, or you can be a dependent of military service member because we, uh, you know, you do move around in, uh, with that. So it's it's open to uh, all um, associate degrees, especially in the in the, the medical field here. And so some of the uh, but you must stay in Kansas for two years after graduating. So that's uh, something that you need. You would need to watch for that. Uh, you have to complete your program in 30 months in which we do. Um, so uh, in, enroll, it says enroll full or part-time uh, for our, I know all of our programs are gonna be full-time. So, um, so it is very good uh, uh, scholarship in addition to uh, some of the things that Newman offers as, you know, institutional scholarships and things like that. So I uh, just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Uh, if you've been in Kansas, you know, if you fall into these, uh, this criteria. Um, Jeff, can you also um, briefly address the healthcare science bachelor's degree that Newman offers? I know we have one person who is interested in it um, and kind of who that might be a good fit for. Sure. Uh, this is a, like uh, uh, Georgia said, this is a, um, uh, a bachelor's degree. It is a, a degree completion program. And so there's a couple of things that you, you know, that can get you there. Uh, one of those is you have to be a, the way it reads right now is that you have to be in one of our programs, uh, whether, you know, in respiratory care or the Rad Tech program, uh, or you could already have that. Uh, if you have that, you can go start working on your uh, you know, completion your degree. We all uh, there's like five core classes that you have to take, uh, but then you have three different concentrations. One is in uh, CAT scan, uh, so we do offer those courses. Uh, one is in psychology slash uh, sociology, and a third one is in uh, in business. So uh, you know, so the biggest thing is that that we see is that. You need to be one in our program or already have a medical uh, degree, like an associate's degree in one of these, uh, you know, 
uh, you know, for uh, radiology or respiratory care. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on to the Q&A portion. Um, I'm going to start with a question that we got in the chat for Brooke um, from a student interested in sonography. Um, student said in an article on Newman's website, we mentioned that students can be proficient in all three modalities or be a master in only one, and they were hoping you could elaborate on that. Sure. So while we do the program, we make sure that everybody gets a rounded education in those three different modalities, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody loves all those modalities once they learn to do them, and that's completely normal and fine. Um, when we say be a master in one, that means that you just decide that you want to focus on one of those modalities when you get out and graduate and decide maybe you want to work in a vascular clinic where it spe uh, specif specifically does vessels. So that's kind of what that means. It doesn't necessarily mean at this point that you're able to just choose one of those. We do have to do all of those while we're in the program um, to be uh, the bachelor's degree. But after that, you can make definitely decide that you just want to do one of those and kind of put your focus there. Uh, we had another question submitted in advance about if any of your programs have program specific scholarships available. So we don't have program specific scholarships, no. So there are some that are out there as far as different um, different uh, uh, groups that will offer them like some of the, the machines, the companies that Siemens and uh, GE and all that, they'll offer some of those kinds of things, but they're not specific to our program. They are for ultrasound and people would have to do those individually. The, the nursing program does have scholarships that are um, through the university specifically for nursing. Uh, you're able to access those and view the requirements for them on the Newman website. And then under academics, if you go to the nursing page, you can actually see what those nursing scholarships are. We also try to keep updated some um, outside possible sources for those scholarships, similar to what Brooke was saying, um, you know, those that might be offered by different organizations and all so that you can look and see, you know, what might fit your needs and what you might qualify for. Uh, for radiology, there's only really just one um, uh, that's it's named after uh, the, the program director that started the program, Ron Shipley. And it's usually uh, given out uh, when, once you start your second year. Uh, and so we get, uh, and there's a specific criteria for that. Uh, so everyone's not going to qualify for it, but, uh, you know, we work with uh, the uh, um, uh, financial aid and things like that to, you know, just to see who, who would qualify for that. For respiratory care, we do have uh, uh, program specific scholarships available at the state and uh, national level. Um, they're small awards, somewhere between like five to a couple thousand dollars. Um, and, but uh, for rad tech and respiratory care, we also have that Kansas Promise Scholarship that is available that's fairly significant, somewhere between five to ten thousand dollars during the uh, program. Um, and I think. It, this isn't really a scholarship, but I think a lot of the other programs have uh, agreements like this with local hospitals. There's a significant amount of money available in the local community. If you are willing to uh, sign a work agreement that upon graduation, you'll go to one of these facilities and work. And I'm talking like ten to $15,000 that's available. Thank you. Um, the next question I have was submitted in advance. It is um, from somebody interested in rad tech, um, just concerned about what a class schedule might look like for a full-time working student, and if it's possible to do this program as a full-time working student. Well, what I would say, now we, uh, we encourage, I mean, when, we don't discourage people from working, right? So, and if you're going to work, uh, someone's going to work full-time, um, it's, you need to have a job that's kind of, you know, your employer is very flexible in your hours uh, because every semester is going to be a little bit different uh, until you get to the spring, the summer and the, uh, and the second fall, because those are, 
you have clinicals four days a week, and then you have uh, your classes on Wednesdays. And so and they get pretty uh, time intensive during that, uh, uh, that period. Now there are some, uh, you know, for radiology, a lot of the big hospitals here in Wichita, they do offer like student, uh, student tech jobs uh, and they pay, you know, roughly about $15 an hour and you get to pick and choose when you uh, decide to, uh, you want to work. Um, you know, cause you, you know, you, I mean, they're gonna work you as much as you're willing to work. Uh, but, you know, you need to at some point say, hey, I can't, um, I, I, I can't work at this time because I got a big test tomorrow or something like that. So, um, you know, we have had some that do work full time, but their, their schedule was very flexible, uh, evenings um, and weekends, so. Thank you. Uh, we had uh, another submitted in the chat. Um, asking uh, how many sonography programs there are in Kansas. Is Newman the only one that offers sonography? No, we are not the only one. There are, um, uh, the ones that I can think of uh, that are close by are about three different other um, schools that offer sonography. Um, I will say that we are, we offer the bachelor's program and we do three uh, modalities within that time frame. There are ones that do different tracks. There's ones that do stuff online. Um, everybody has their different pros and cons. Um, so I would encourage you to kind of just do your research. Um, I can't really say one way or the other what my uh, preference would be, um, but I can say that um, as far as for your, your own view, but um, I can say for myself that um, having the hands-on training in lab, in person, is something that we offer here at Newman. And you have your first whole year on campus with us prior to going out into clinical time. So you would have content and corresponding labs to go along with those. So our students go out into clinical time having all foundational scanning complete. So they go out and they're ready to put, put that uh, skill set to use and start building on it. Um, other programs may not be able to offer that. Um, I can't really say of one way or the other on that, but I do know that we make sure that our students are ready to start scanning when they go into clinical time. And just in case I took that question out of context, um, Newman does have multiple outreach campuses. However, the Wichita, the main campus is the only place where we're offering the sonography program, just in case that's what that person was asking. Um, yeah, yeah, we are on campus here at uh, in Wichita. Uh, yes, but we do our clinicals outside. Yeah. Um, I do have a, a question for. Um, goodness, there's some interesting questions in here. Hey, uh, George, we, can I can I respond to that just a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so and you know Brooke talked about some of the other programs, but I do want to say that uh, for uh, for sonography. Uh, in a lot of, in some of the other modalities, some of the other uh, institutions that have these programs, um, they you end up having to find your own clinical space uh, to do that. And so, and the, that's a good thing about the one the sonography program here is that you know we you have your clinic your um, your lab time and all that, but Brooke also has clinical spaces already set up for you to go to. So uh, yeah, doesn't, that's like it's not That's always exactly uh, perfect everywhere else, so. <laughs> yes, exactly. We wanna make sure that you go into positive learning environments. So we definitely scout those out and uh, make sure they're, they're ready to go. Thank you. Um, so we had somebody, um, somebody interested in healthcare science ask about the healthcare field in general and how it, seems to be their perception is that it is busy and has a shortage of staff. Um, do you feel that this is still true and what kind of benefits might students see from staff shortages? Well, there is absolutely no doubt that there is still um, shortages. Um, and, and I would say we could consider that to be across every area of healthcare, whether it's all of our individual professions, but also physicians, physician's assistants, nurse practitioners, um, an ability to have providers for people everywhere. There has just been a big shortage. Um, and, and we have known this was coming for many, many years. Uh, and as the 
population in the U.S. reaches an older age because of the huge increase in our population with the baby boomers, we're seeing them reach an age where they all are coming in accessing health care, and that increases the requirement for providers, and we just can't keep up with the number that are needed. And so the advantage of that to students is, um, I think everybody would agree with this, that students can expect to have a job prior to being ready to graduate. Um, we, we don't have anyone who doesn't, hasn't already been offered a position prior to graduation. And if they haven't been offered a position, it's because they have chosen not to seek any a position out yet. Some students just prefer to get everything done, get their license, and then start seeking a job. They like to do it very stepwise. So um, the greatest advantage is that, yeah, there's jobs out there. I think another advantage is that all of us are seeing um, the compensation for healthcare workers beginning to increase in amount, whether that is by, you know, the amount of pay, um, looking at ideas, some of this is a little slower to be implemented, but certainly is in the works, ideas on how to allow more creative scheduling, when do you work, um, what's that look like, it is, this is kind of an exciting time because what we're going it, to, it's a difficult time, but what we're seeing is a lot of really, really smart people getting together and trying to figure out how, how do we make this work better for people? Um, everything in healthcare, every job, it's hard. We all work hard, um, but it is so rewarding that it's worth the hard work but we have to figure out on the other side, what are the things that make up for how hard it is? And what does that look like? And, and how do we support people? And that's what is changing and is so exciting right now. Well, um, I'm gonna echo what Teresa said. I agree with her 100%, but one thing I do want uh, to let everyone know from the student perspective, is that once you start, you, you get into one of these programs and you start doing your clinicals, just realize that you it's pretty much a job interview the whole time you're at clinical. And so there, you know, just because you're, I, I know you're, you would be a student, but they are looking at your work ethic and, you know, or do you show up on time, all that type stuff. So these are things that you need to be aware of is when you start going to clinical uh, and, you know, especially they, they call us and want us, you know, uh, to do references and, you know, even from the education, not necessarily the grade wise, but again, do you show up to class on time? Do you, you know, you are, you, you're doing what you're supposed to do, those type things. And so I uh, just want you to be aware of that. It's not just, uh, I mean, I, I, there is a shortage, but, you know, to help, uh, they're going to be looking at you while you're at, at the clinical sites. I just wanted to, I just wanted to add one quick thing, you know, it, I agree 100% with what was just said. Um, the other cool thing is for even for our students, first semester, most of them have multiple job offers. And by their second semester, most of them are employed working as student RTs. And upon graduation, all of them have full time jobs, you know, so it's like, there's so many options for them, they can choose Maybe you go to one hospital um, and you realize, oh, their work culture is a little, it doesn't quite match mine. And I like this other one. I mean, both places will be giving you an offer and you get to choose which one you want to go to, which is very, very nice. And because of the shortage, um, yes, there's a lot of pay bumps that are going up, but there are huge increases in sign-on bonuses. And I want to say maybe 10 years ago, sign-on bonuses were like $1,000, $3,000. Over COVID, we're talking about ten thousand. Just yesterday, okay, this is an anomaly, but I saw one for forty thousand dollars. So, I mean, it's pretty crazy what's available right now, and that's how desperate a lot of these healthcare systems are for quality healthcare workers. And any of these programs would fit that bill. Is it too late for me to go into one of these programs? Because that sounded pretty really. I could. I mean, I could use forty G. Um, 
Yeah, we, 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 we will enroll you. <laughs> you just work uh, on your free recs. Ah, uh, goodness. I, I can't handle the sight of blood, so maybe not. Um, we had another question in the chat for Brooke, sonography. Um, does everyone who applies to the sonography program have an opportunity for the interview and test? And if not, what advice do you have for them to be more competitive in the application process? Yeah, so unfortunately, not everybody does. And that's only because um, some people just aren't, have, don't, aren't application eligible. So like I said, all the courses need to be completed with a C or higher, but also maintain that 3.0 GPA. So if those criteria are met in the beginning, then yeah, you can get through to um, doing the testing and interview process. Um, but honestly, I would say there's only just a few that don't meet that because I think that someone who's really interested has met with me, has gotten information, has looked up the stuff. And so the fact that this person has already asked about the testing means that they have looked into some of the um, pieces of the application. So I would say the best things to do is to make sure that you have some good references um, I like to see people who've done some volunteer work, some people who have a good uh, job history, because those people can attest to your character. And knowing that your character means a lot in a healthcare, I would say that, you know, it's, it's a big part of professionalism. So there's that. Um, making sure that, you know, obviously you guys are going to be good students and you, you've worked hard to get to that point. So that, that part's already checked off. You, you become eligible that way brush up on interview skills. So myself and my clinical coordinator, we go through the interview process and we ask questions and we also look it through, um, not just how you answer the question, but the voice in the question, making sure that you are confident, um, the fact that you can answer questions that are typical interview questions and just looking prepared. So those types of things. And I would say, you know, honestly, now we're in a different place, but previously it was hard to get in and do some volunteer um, ob observing hours, but that is pretty big deal also. It shows a really high interest in the, the career path that you're wanting to take. So we, we, we like to see people who have spent some time in the hospital or a clinic. And I'm not saying, you know, like weeks on end, but you know, maybe eight hours, a couple hours here or there, you know, throughout a semester, um, just to make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. So if you do a few different days, you get to see different exams and um, all those things together can create a very good application. Thank you. Um, I, we had, to be honest, some uh, very similar questions submitted for the other programs in the RSVP form. So do you all wanna talk uh, briefly about what it is that you're looking for in applicants and what would make them you know, a successful admit to the, your programs? Sure. Um, you know, a lot of these, like, just like Brooke said, it's a lot of is uh, communication skills. We, you know, I know in radiology, we look for, look for that uh, because I don't know if, you know, if you've ever had uh, x-rays done, you probably didn't know what position you needed to be in to get the, you know, specific images. So, you know, you have to, so the technologist had to communicate with you. And so we, we uh, so when you come to the interview, uh, be able to, you know, be like Brooke said, just be confident in what you're, what you're saying. Um, if you have the opportunity to go shadow someone, because we really didn't want you to uh, make sure you know what you're getting into, because a lot of these things look good on paper, but if you don't know what you're getting into, you know, because invariably, you know, every year I've got uh, maybe one or two that drop out because it's not what they thought it was. And so we highly encourage you, if you can, to go, uh, you know, shadow someone. It might be four hours or it might be even eight hours. Uh, so uh, we, I highly encourage you to do that. Um, we also recommend, uh, and it's part of our application process, a shadowing experience. Just as Jeff said, you really don't want to spend all this money um, and pay money for this program that doesn't fit you, right? So during that shadow experience, you get a, a general overview at, at, at one of the two local hospitals um, and, and you kind of get a broad perspective of what respiratory care looks like. The other thing is um, a service-oriented mindset. I mean, healthcare is a service field, a service industry. And if you're not into helping and serving others, it's probably not the field that you wanna be in. So for nursing, things that we're really looking at when we look at do an interview, we do interview everyone who meets all qualifications. 
Um, but that includes, you know, meets the minimum GPA of 2.85, has completed all of the prerequisite nursing classes, and has completed their general education requirements. Um, without having things completed, we, you know, there's no reason for us to do an interview because an individual is not going to be able to enter the program. Now, when I say completed all of those courses, you can you can apply for the program at the time you are in your last semester of completing those. So you could actually be taking those classes and, and we would be fine. Or even if you were applying in the spring for the fall, you could have a plan to take that class in the summer and let us know that. We will consider that. And then you know, if we accept you, we'll just make it contingent upon completing those things that we had talked about. For your best chance at being accepted, um, like everybody else had said, we, we want to have an idea of, do you know what nursing is? What Do you know what nurses do? You know, nurses don't follow the doctor around and do what the doctor tells us to do. Um, we're We're doing a lot of you know, the work, we're doing it on our own in a very autonomous manner. We're not just handing out pills, handing out meds. We're making sure those aren't doing any harm and noticing if somebody is having a problem. We need people to understand that, you know, there is a lot of mental work that must go on for patients to be safe and for them to receive quality care. So that's an important piece for us is that has this person who says they want to be a nurse, have they looked enough at what nursing is to understand those roles? Um, you know, definitely the higher the grade point average in those nursing prerequisites and general ed courses, the, the higher you're, you know, you're going to score in that interview. Um, as Brooke talked about, we, you know, we're going to ask some questions. We want to see that ability to hear a question, think about it, and give a response. And that response be able to be understood and logical to the uh, interview team. Um, I really like to see applicants come with questions of their own. Uh, it indicates to me that they've been thinking about what what am I what what's important to me and and I we we don't we can't read your minds so we don't know what you might want to know and so that's an important piece. The other is um, just being able to kind of tell us a little bit about who you are and 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 why this is an area of interest for you. Um, you know, as Jeff said, you know, we've had students who've spent two years getting ready to come into our program, come in and after a couple of weeks say, oh, I didn't know this is what you guys did in nursing. Um, and, you know, and then they withdraw and I'm just like, whoa, you have spent a lot of time, money and energy and, you know, there, there, was, there are ways that you can look into things to make sure it is what you're interested in. We don't require shadowing, but certainly we want somebody to have done the work to figure out, is this something I really am interested? Nursing is the largest um, profession in healthcare. We have the most people in healthcare are, you know, nurses. And so it's pretty easy to find a nurse and ask them, hey, what do you do? What are, what, are, what do you say that nurses do? And what do you like about nursing? What do you not like about nursing? It's very easy to find somebody to talk to and, and they're a good resource. Um, you know, doing the homework to prepare yourself to come into an interview goes a long way in us and 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 looking and acting professional is an absolute. Thank you. Um, we have an international student on today's call who is interested in nursing, um, attends, I think, a local college. 
Um, is there anything in specific, specifically for nursing that they would need to do differently other than maybe some different things in the admissions process for nursing because they're international? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, have to have, uh, you know, um, meet the scores on like TOEFL. Um, you know, you, you have to have that language, that ability to read, write, and speak English well enough um, to be in practice, I we you know it's I, I recognize that if you if you have it speak another language as your first language, that it's very common that in your reading you may be translating in your head as you go. But in clinical practice, you have to be able to do that well enough and fast enough to respond to say your patients having an emergency. You you have to be able to do that quickly. Um, the nursing program. There is a lot of, you know, reading um, involved in the program. There's a lot of testing involved in the program. So those language skills, um, if they aren't at a level where you're you're pretty proficient with that, it, it will make it much more difficult for you. I am not saying it makes it impossible, but it certainly makes it more difficult. So I think that's something to think about. One of the things that is a requirement to receive a license, now for all of our programs, when you finish a degree in a professional program and license, even as an international student here on a student visa, you are allowed to stay in the US to work with in your profession to gain experience and you know solidify your knowledge and skills more after you graduate for a period of time. Um, after that, you either are you know required to leave the country or you have to qualify for a um, green card, a permanent you know work visa. And so you know that's something to also you know kind of be thinking about. But the other thing for our licensure is that if you are applying for a nursing license in the United States, because you want to stay here and get that extra experience, um, you have to have a social security number. And so that's one of those pieces that, or you have to have that, you know, ID number, government ID number. Um, as part of the application. And so that is an absolute that has to take place is that you have to have that. Other than that, as far as our application process, our interviewing and progressing through the program, all students are treated the same. The international students are not treated any differently than um, students who are citizens here and, and you know from the US. Thank you. Uh, we do have some athletes on today's call, uh, and we had a question about, you know, this student is exploring, not really sure what program they're going to pick yet, but um, do you guys have athletes in your program? Are your programs doable with athletics? What kind of adjustments do they need to make? Yeah, we Obvious, do. Obviously, if they're picking an associate's program, they might not be utilizing all four years of their athletic eligibility, so that's something to think about, but yeah, tell me about athletes in your program. Right. So we do have athletes and we, you know, as we understand that, I mean, you know, uh, that you want, you're, you're an athlete and Newman likes athletes. And so uh, we're willing to work around your, you know, your schedule, uh, you know, to, especially for us, for the most part, it's uh, this, the clinical piece of it is what we have to work around the most. Uh, and, but we are willing to work with you uh, for that. Now, I know uh, Georgia mentioned about, you know, the associate's degree. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, for, uh, even though for radiology as a whole, uh, sonography is a part of uh, radiology uh, as a separate modality, but it's one of those that you don't actually have to be an x-ray tech to get to, uh, because I mentioned a few other ones for that. So you can go into sonography without being an x-ray tech. Now I do encourage you, if you because of the the number of students that each of us take, uh, and you're and you have all the prerequisites for sonography, uh, and the ones I need for radiology are are the same ones that Brooke is going to need. Uh, so 
uh, I encourage you to, you know, to apply to both programs. Um, so, because the more you, the more modalities you can have under your belt and know how to do, when you get out to the, to the, um, to the hospitals and you you can do multiple things, uh, they're probably going to have more apt to hire you and, you know, probably pay you more money. So, and cause Brooke, she's a, she does sonography, but she's also an x-ray tech as well. So, uh, so just, I just want to mention that it's not necessarily a requirement to do that. Yep, that's right. Um, and I, I definitely would suggest, I tell all of our applicants to apply to both programs. It just really gives you more options. I mean, you know, who doesn't want to have to um, be, who doesn't want a situation where you can just choose, you know, have a choice, you know, you get accepted to both and then you can make your own decision. So that's, that's a good point to bring up, Jeff. On the sports part, we do have athletes. Um, and like Jeff said, the biggest obstacle is making sure clinical time is met because um, obviously we cannot sign off unless clinical hours have been completed. It's just, um, you can't be board eligible to sit um, unless you have the appropriate amount of hours. So even though you can be granted the time away and we can make it up, it just, it would have to be made up and we can't just um, make those hours up and allow it to be the person to be able to graduate on time if they don't have the time in. So there's just that, you know, we can try to work it around, you know, there's different breaks and stuff. We can try to fit it in. It just depends on how much time is missed. And for respiratory care, it's the same thing. Um, we've had athletes, several different um, uh, uh, sports in the last few years, and all of them had been able to uh, participate. Uh, this last year, we had um, a women's soccer player and she was able to make 22 out of 23 uh, games. So that's pretty awesome, I think. She only missed one due to clinical issues, so. So nursing, um, when you talk to a lot of other schools as an athlete, you may be told you cannot do athletics and do nursing. Um, at Newman, we strongly believe that is not true. And um, I look at it and I have actually been able to find some articles that are out in the professional literature that kind of speak to this also that I think about it that with you're an athlete, you have spent all your life um, learning how to be a team player. You have had to balance your time, have good time management, and you had to be able to organize. And these are all core skills necessary for nursing. And I would say core skills necessary for every area of healthcare. And so from my perspective, the way I look at it, why wouldn't I want athletes in my nursing program? They're bringing these great skills with them that they've already developed. What I will say though, is being a student athlete can be hard. You do have to balance everything and you do have to be very organized. Um, and I think Georgia can speak to that also as having been a student athlete at Newman. And, and what I wanna say is that we will be very, very supportive and we practice give and take on both sides. But in reality, the extra work is on the student athlete. And so you have to come to this with that mindset that I want to do this and so I'm going to be willing to give more to do the two things that I really want to do be a student in the nursing program respiratory sono rad tech whichever one it is be that student and also be allowed to continue to compete in my sport that I love in an NCAA Division II school. And so it's about developing the mindset that you're willing to do the work to do that. Thanks all. I have two really quick questions. Um, Jeff, for Rad Tech, does the application take into account T's testing or ACT scores or is admission solely based off of GPA and other application materials? Uh, yes, we do not do the T's test. Uh, we do the mainly just the the GPA, making sure that's done. But we also we put a lot of emphasis on our uh, on the uh, interview uh, that we do because you do it. Uh, the interview is not it's with the, it's like a panel interview, uh, doing with our four faculty. Uh, you're you're graded on a rubric, and you know every uh, every 
candidate is asked the same questions. Uh, and then you have to make at least a 60 or above on that rubric. And then we start from the top, uh, whoever the highest score and go down until we get to that. Now that we always, until uh, uh, we fill our slots, but we also do uh, keep a, um, a list just in, you know, you may have made it, but you know, it just didn't, maybe not as high as everyone as other ones, but uh, you know, and like we talked about before, some people just decide maybe this is not for them, you know, because uh, even during the summer, things happen, life happens. And so we have a list that we still uh, continue to go off of to, to fill slots whenever we need, uh, need to do so. Thank you. And last question is for Brooke. Uh, we have a student interested in sonography who is taking anatomy and physiology two and physics this semester at Butler, but planning to finish patho in the summer. Can they still apply for the program this spring or do they have to have finished all of their classes prior to applying? So all prerequisites are to be completed by this spring semester except pathophysiology. So pathophysiology can be completed in the summer, but if offered a position, it is contingent on passing that course with a C or higher without mm -hmm. it affecting the GPA. So uh, absolutely. And Butler is one that we do um, accept that is an upper division. I think that's going to wrap up our uh, Q&A portion. Uh, we hey, do need to, Georgia. we went a little bit over. Yeah. Could I say one quick plug for all of our programs? Yeah, go for I, it. I think one of the strengths of Newman um, for all the healthcare programs it are the clinical affiliates that we get to work at. The clinical experience compared to other schools, in my opinion, is, is on another level. We have such great uh, working relationships with the big hospitals in the area. You get a lot of experience, a lot of exposure, and that's really what makes you a better clinician. So I just wanted to throw that plug out to every, for everyone. <laughs> Well, and I'm going to plug um, next steps. So um, I put in the chat our uh, link to the application and the link to our visits. Um, this is application season for these programs. So we're getting ready to open up applications. If you are thinking about starting one of these programs this fall, um, think about applying. Uh, you do have to apply and be admitted to Newman University for this fall uh, if you're planning to apply for one of these. Uh, we have to know that you're admissible. Also admitting you and getting all your transcripts, we can share those with the programs and it allows us to give you a scholarship and start working on financial aid. If you're not sure if you're program ready, I would highly recommend a visit or some type of appointment with an advisor or a faculty member to try and determine what prereqs you might still have left, make a plan for that, or if you're program ready, maybe get a little bit more information about the application. Um, so definitely check up. We had a lot of questions in the chat and submitted in advance tonight about what classes do I need to get into this program? When does the application open? Um, we addressed a little bit of that in our intros, but if you go to our website and you're going on the page for these programs, you should be able to see the prerequisite classes that you need. Um, I'll send out a little bit of information after today's meeting. Um, if you're a first time student coming in, whether you have college credit or not, um, then you'll have to do some prereqs and, and gen eds and things like that before you're program ready. Um, if you're coming in from a two-year college, you might already have a lot of the prereqs and gen eds done and be close to or at program ready. Uh, if you're attending a two-year college in Kansas, we have articulation agreements with most, if not all, of the two-year colleges in Kansas. And we have guides on our registrar's page of the website that will literally tell you if you're attending Butler Community College and you're wanting to come in for nursing, Here's all the classes that you can take at Butler to fulfill prereqs and gen eds to make you ready for that transfer over and applying to that program. Um, so we also have the people in the admissions office, admissions counselors that are working with these specific majors. So we have an admissions counselor who works with all of our nursing apps, somebody who works with all of our sonography apps and so on. Um, what I'm showing here on the screen is scholarships. We had a lot of students ask about scholarships. Um, our application is online. It is free for most everyone. However, international students, there is a $25 application fee, uh, very small. Um, if you are applying, we'll ask you for a bunch of information. There's no essay, there's no personal statements or recommendations required. It takes 10 minutes. Uh, first time students are required to submit their official high school transcript to be admitted. Doesn't have to be final yet. And we'll give you a scholarship, a per year scholarship. These are all amounts good for every year for four years based on your GPA. Uh, we are test optional. We no longer require ACT or SAT scores to be submitted. 
Um, so most times we're awarding a scholarship based on the student's GPA, but I also have ACT on here because if you have a stellar ACT and it gets you more money than your GPA would, we're gonna go with that. Um, if you are a transfer student applying to the university, um, you may do so. Uh, please keep in mind, if you're planning to come here and do classes in the summer, apply for summer. Uh, if you're planning just to start classes with us in the fall, apply for the fall. Um, transfer students, again, free application except for international students. And then um, we would just need you to list and send an official transcript from all post-secondary institutions. So if you earned credit in high school over the summer, um, CLEP, AP, any post-secondary institutions you've attended or earned credit at, we need transcripts for all of those. Um, we award you a, a, trans, a transfer scholarship based on your cumulative transfer GPA across all of your credit. Those range between eleven dollars to $15,000 per year for two years. And if you need a third year to finish your degree, we can work with that. Um, a lot of opportunities at Newman. I know that, that you know we're a private university. A lot of times expensive is the first word that comes to mind. But we have really generous scholarships. Uh, transfers, we also have scholarship incentives for if you have your associate's degree before you come to Newman, or even if you're a Phi Theta Kappa PTK member. So make sure that's on your transcript when you send it to us. Um, we can be very affordable. And I think these programs are top notch and really put you in a good spot to get a job even before you've graduated. Um, so look out for more information from us. Your contact is going to all of these directors so that they can reach out and send more info. Um, and if there's anything we can do to help with applying and visiting, please let us know. But thank you for joining us tonight. This ends our Zoom. And if you know anyone that would really like to see this, we're going to be posting it to our Fly Newman U YouTube page. Um, so you can check it out in the coming days. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.